Do you want you, your kids, family and friends to be safe and healthy? Safe and healthy with every drug you take if you are sick, with every chemical you touch, you inhale or you um, eat? Absolutely. I hear you think. Well, how can anybody prove that we are indeed safe and healthy with all the new compounds in creams that should us make look younger and sexier, with all the chemicals that should make our clothing dry up quickly if we are nervous and sweat? With all the drugs that are newly developed in order to cure diseases people have died from yesterday. The best way would be to test on humans, right? Are you willing to be the test person? Or you? I wouldn't. So what can we do instead? Well, we use surrogates, models, to represent the human body. The scientists don't like to talk about this a lot. It is a polarizing topic we are well aware. Actually, we are using our next relatives in the animal kingdom, namely the mammals. And among them, we mainly use mice and rats. This is the status quo. And by the way, there is a fun side in it as well, even if for the mouse and the rat it's not funny at all. But scientists worldwide have a preference for a specific sex of their experimental animal. What would you guess? <laughs> no? It's not the attraction of my main, mainly male colleagues for the opposite sex. Actually, mainly male mice and rats are used. Why is that? Well, in short, they are cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> not as many of them are needed for breeding, right? And they are easier to standardize because <laughs> yeah, they do not have a hormonal cycle. Hmm. But do we really think that we represent the whole human population if we use male rats only and mice? What about the female half? Do we represent women with their menstrual cycle well enough by researching male animals? Me and my colleagues think this is not the case. We have conducted a study where we showed that um, female kidneys behave differently than male kidneys. And we found an effect of the hormonal changes during the menstrual cycle. We did this study on human probands, so we took women and men, we collected urinary samples and we found specific peaks of our urinary marker uh, correlating with specific phases of the menstrual cycle in women, whereas in men and postmenopausal women the same marker remained low all the time. We interpreted our results to indicate that women could have a better ability to repair their kidneys as compared to males. And this could be linked to the observed lesser degree uh, of kidney diseases in women than in men. So our results and those of other colleagues worldwide working in the field of gender medicine show that we should not forget about the female half. And actually, this view is backed up 
by major research funding agencies and scientific publishers that request the use of both females and males whenever it is appropriate. But criticism has been raised by this request. And one of the points was, well, if we have to use female animals in addition to male animals, this would increase the number of animals that we need for testing. Wouldn't this be unethical? Hmm. Yeah, if we miss the point, isn't it also unethical to use the male animals in the first place? And talking about ethics, isn't it unethical to use male animals at all? Yeah, this brings us back to our initial question. Do you want to be safe and healthy? Actually, it is consensus that we humans accept animal suffering in order to keep us safe and healthy. But, hmm, are animals really good models for the human physiology? To tell you the truth, most of the time, our strategy works fine. But most of the time is not always, right? We have witnessed examples of drugs in the past that were perfectly safe on animals, but had fatal consequences on the humans that were exposed. And the reverse is also true. We have drugs on the market today that are sold millionfold and that are major life saviors that are toxic to animals but perfectly safe to us humans. Back then, when they were developed, over 100 years ago, these drugs were given to humans directly. But we do not want to go there, right? So what can we do instead? Is there anything out there? Are there alternatives? The answer is yes, there are. A lot of my colleagues worldwide work hardly on developing alternative methods to animal experimentation, and they use a whole lot of different strategies. And to give you just one success story here, the European Union banned the use of animal testing for cosmetic development a few years ago. So all the new uh, cosmetics that are produced and sold in the European Union have to be tested using alternative methods now. But we are not there everywhere. In pharmaceutical development, in basic research, we still use a lot of animals. So, we still need a lot of commitment to change. And my research team in the lab and I are full-heartedly committed to make our contribution. What we want to do is we want to develop sexy cells. What do we mean by that? We want to develop a cellular model whereby the cells remember that they are female or male. We will do this by using a relatively novel type of cells. They are called induced pluripotent stem cells. These cells resemble embryonic stem cells but no embryo is needed. These cells can be derived by a normal body cell, from me, from you, and can be reprogrammed to the pluripotent status by a relatively simple protocol for which the Nobel Prize was awarded in 2012. These induced pluripotent stem cells can then be transformed, we say differentiated, 
into any cell type of the body. And we, as you know now, are interested in kidney function. So we want to differentiate these cells into kidney cells. And we want to manipulate the differentiation protocol, adding sex hormones at specific times in order to get a model whereby we then can analyze the differences between female and male uh, cells without having to use animals. And of course, we hope that our cellular model will be used widely in the future by the pharmaceutical companies or by the chemical companies to test uh, their new substances and to check if there are differences in the action on women or men regarding the kidney cells or if the same action actually takes place. And this brings us to our major vision. We hope that one day we are able to get rid of animal experimentation and do all the testing that we need and all the research that we need using alternative methods. But as you now know, we are not yet there. What is needed is a major commitment by the researchers that are working on alternative methods, by our colleagues that still use animals to be open-minded and use and adapt the alternative methods to their own application, by the funding organizations to fund the research on alternative methods and to request the use of alternative methods. Then, of course, by the governmental bodies to provide legislation in order to protect the experimental animals. And last but not least, we need you, the public, to support our call for alternative methods to animal experimentation so that we all can be safe and healthy without animals having to suffer and die. Thank you. <laughs>